In order to discuss the binomial theorem, we need to, uh, I need to remind you of what's a binomial. Um, hopefully you recall that uh, when we have two things that are added together, we call each of the things terms, and when we have two things added together, um, we, call them, uh, we call that a binomial. Um, if we have many things added together, we call that a polynomial. So a binomial is sort of a special case of a, of a polynomial. So this a plus b is a binomial. Now let's take a look and see what happens if we raise this binomial to the power of zero. Um, take a moment and see if you know what that result is going to be. You should have guessed 1. That's what it is. Um, let's take a look at another one. Let's look at a plus b. And how about if we raise it to the first power? That one I'm going to help you with because I, I, I have a feeling you can get that one. It's uh, 1a plus 1b. Usually we just write it as a plus b, but I'm going to write it as 1a plus 1b. Um, now let's take a look and see what happens if we have a plus b raised to the second power, or squared. Why don't you pause the video for a moment and, and write out and see, see what you get when you multiply, when you get, when you take a plus b and raise it to the second power. Hopefully you remembered that you have to FOIL this. It's not a squared plus b squared. What you get is um, when you do a plus b times a plus b, you get a squared plus a b plus um, maybe b a possibly you might write plus b squared. And uh, let's clean that up. And that's uh, 1 a squared plus 2 a b um, a b plus b a is, is these two are the same and if I add them together I get 2 a b plus <clears throat> 1 b squared so 1 a squared plus 2 a b plus 1 b squared let's go ahead and let's try a plus b to the third power and again I'd really like it if you tried this on your own before you watch me do it um, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do it now, if you need a hint, um, uh, one thing that we could do to make this a little easier is we can make this into a plus b times um, a plus b squared. So what if I just do a plus b times a squared plus 2ab plus b squared? This makes it a little bit easier. Um, now I, I, I've saved the trouble of having to FOIL that. Um, and then we'll go and we'll distribute a cubed um, plus 2a squared b plus uh, a times b squared that's plus a b squared plus now I'll do a second row with b times a squared so that's uh, a squared b that's uh, b times a squared is a squared b plus um, b times 2ab that's 2ab squared um, and then b times b squared, that's b cubed. And if I add these all together, what I get is a cubed. And plus um, 2a squared b plus a squared b, that's 3a squared b. Um, and then ab squared plus 2ab squared, that's 3ab squared and then plus b cubed. Now, one more time, what if I asked you to do a plus b to the fourth power? Um, I'll tell you what, I'll be the first to admit that's going to take a bit of work. Um, wouldn't it be nice if there was an easier way? Well, guess what? The good news here is uh, that's why we are studying this thing called the binomial theorem. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try, there we go, binomial theorem. Um, we're we're going to look and see if there's an easier way to take care of this. Now, before I can show you the tricky way to multiply out a plus b to the fourth power, um, I want to point something out here. I want you to notice something. Take a look up at here. <clears throat> look at that one. 
and look at the other the coefficients of the results from a plus b to the first power look at look at what we get for a plus b to the zero power <clears throat> look at the coefficients that we get for a plus b to the second power look at this one two one and then take a look at the third power um, look at the coefficients that we get here and by the way I'll, I'll remind you that out in front um, there is a one there and there's also supposed to be a one there and uh, <clears throat> and so look at the coefficients um, let's go purple so there we go so we've got a 1 and a 1 and a 1 and a 1, 2, 1 and a 1, 3, 3, 1. Um, these numbers are not coincidental. There's a pattern here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new page and I'll show you the pattern. The pattern that we see is known as Pascal's Triangle. And the way Pascal's Triangle works is this. It starts with a 1 and then 1, 1 and then 1, 2, 1, and then 1, 3, 3, 1, just like we saw on the, uh, in, in the last uh, scene. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of hoping that maybe you can begin to see the pattern. So why don't you pause the video right now and see if you can write the next row in Pascal's triangle. Let's see if you agree with me. Um, the next row should be this. Now, again, if you didn't get it last time, or even if you did, why don't you pause the video and see if you can write the next row now. And let's see if you agree with me. <clears throat> Hopefully you're beginning to get the pattern. Now I've seen it where some people still don't get the pattern at this point. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure it out and see if you can write the next row now. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see if we agree. Now, if you're still not getting the pattern, I'm just going to share it with you what's happening here. What we do is any two numbers that you see, you add them together and you put a number below and in between those two numbers. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. Um, 1 plus 4 is 5. Everywhere we have two numbers in a row on top, we add them together and then we put a, a number just below that in between the two that is the sum of those two numbers. This is called Pascal's Triangle. Now what we end up with is um, this gets us <clears throat> the coefficients for the result of a binomial expansion. So in other words if I have a plus b to the zero power what I will get is just a single one. If I have a plus b to the first power, a binomial to the first power, I will get 1a plus 1b. Um, if I go to the second power, um, I'll get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and then so on and so forth. Third power, fourth power, fifth power, sixth power. These are the coefficients. So, how can this help us, you might ask? Well, let's uh, remind ourselves what, what the challenge was from the last video. We were going to take, uh, oops, we were going to take uh, a plus b to the fourth power, and we were going to try to multiply it all out. But I told you I was going to show you an easier way. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this row that has the fourth power, and I'm going to copy down those coefficients one by one. We'll start with one. Now, before I write the other co well, actually, I'll just write them down so you can see them. So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Those will be the coefficients of each term. Next, remember terms are things that are added together. Next, I will come up with the a's and the b's. Um, we have a 1, and then we'll have a to the fourth power, and then we'll have plus uh, 4 
times a to the third power and then uh, b and then plus 6 times a to the second power um, times b to the second power plus 4 times a uh, times b to the third plus 1b to the fourth. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, where did I come up with these? And there is a pattern, and I'm going to try to show it to you. So let's take a look. Let's see if you can see the pattern. Um, first thing, um, you'll notice that the, um, the, the power, let's see if I can come up with a slightly better highlighter color. Maybe, maybe this will be nice. Let's try that. There we go. Um, the, the power of A's start with the same as the power of the binomial and then the powers of a go down one at a time um, from four to three to two to this is a to the first power we don't have to put a number and then finally a to the zero power is simply one um, and then the b's kind of do a similar thing let's take a look with the b's we go from the zero power for b to the first power for b to the second power, to the third power, to the fourth. So the pattern is, is that the a's start at the power of the binomial, and they go down by one, and the b's start at zero, and then they go up by one all the way until you get to the power of the binomial. So you're going to try. Um, let's go ahead and see what you can do with a plus b to the fifth power. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you can do. All right, so hopefully you've taken the time to write it out. I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint just in case you didn't. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Those will be the coefficients um, for the fifth power of a plus b. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unveil the whole thing worked out. Are you ready? Here I go. Um, you might want to pause this if you want to try it on your own. Here I go. I'm going to show you the whole thing at once. You ready? Here we go. There we go, that's what you should have. 1 times a to the 5th plus 5 times a to the 4th times b plus 10 times a cubed times b squared plus 10a squared b cubed plus 5a times b to the 4th plus 1a to the 5th. And again, notice the pattern here. Um, what we're saying is that you will, the a's will go, will, they'll start at the power of the binomial and then they will go down by 1. And uh, here's a to the first power, and finally we have a to the zero power, which you don't see at all. And then we'll do a similar thing with uh, the b's. They start at b to the zero, then b to the first power, which you cannot see, b to the second power, b to the third power, b to the fourth power, and b to the fifth power. Hopefully this is helping you to get how to expand a binomial. This is known as binomial expansion. Um, in the next video, I'll talk about some other neat tricks we can do with this.